meeting again. For those who might not have gotten the chance to meet me, and I apologize if you were at the dinner and I didn't introduce myself, so shame on me. I'm Frank Johnson. It's my great pleasure to serve as the Vice, Presidents for Ac Vice President for Academics here at Tabor College. And uh, as I said before the dinner, this is one of the highlights of the year for us in the Academic Affairs Office. And so I would like to formally welcome everyone to our uh, faculty lecture. Uh, I'm especially delighted to see a number of students here. Thanks uh, for e to each of you for coming. And uh, again, I give a word of recognition to Dr. Bill and Joyce Lowen f for generously endowing this event uh, a number of years ago. And unfortunately, he couldn't be here tonight, but the, the distinguished Tabor Emeriti faculty that this, in, uh, this lecture is named after, Dr. Richard G. Kyle, Doc Kyle, uh, we're just so blessed to have him as part of our community. Um, he just wasn't where he could come tonight, and so we just uh, honor him as much as the Lowens. And with that, I'm going to introduce Dr. Wendell Lowen, who will introduce our lecturers. Dr. Lowen. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. It is an honor for me to introduce our presenters for the 25th annual Dr. Richard G. Kyle faculty lecture. Dr. Sheila Litke and Professor Shin Hee Chin are colleagues that I deeply admire for their expertise and excellence in their field, for their depth of character, and their spirit of generosity and service. They represent I think the best of Tabor College. Dr. Litke has served for 22 years as professor of piano, and for years she has provided excellent leadership to Tabor's music preparatory school. She is also currently serving as department chair of performing and visual art and the associate arts director. She earned her doctor of musical arts from the uh, University of Kansas and has adjudicated for multiple competitions and festivals in this region of the country. Her technical expertise and skill as a pianist and accompanist are second to none. We are in for a magical evening. Professor Chin has served Tabor for 17 years as professor of art. She holds a Master of Fine Arts in Fiber Arts from Hong Yik University in Seoul, South Korea, and a Master of Arts in Fiber Arts from Cal State University, Long Beach. She is an internationally renowned uh, presenter with exhibits and shows all over the world, and there are too many for us to name or list here. But some of her more recent work is on display right here in the Ebel Gallery as part of the Matter and Spirit exhibition. Her exceptional artwork in this unique medium is both visually stunning and captivating and deeply meaningful. Tonight, Dr. Litke and Professor Chin are presenting a collaborative work entitled Butterfly Masks, which feature Professor Chin's artwork and Dr. Litke's performance of Robert Schumann's Papillon, Opus 2. Each of our presenters will be sharing, I believe, a little bit about this collaboration for some further context, and there will be a question and answer time later, and we look forward to hearing their heart and their passion behind this collaborative work and some of the imagination that gave rise to this creation. So would you please join me in welcoming Professor Shin Hee Chin and Dr. Sheila Litke. Good evening. Both Shin He and I would like to thank Dr. Johnson and the Kyle Lecture Committee 
for the honor of being selected for giving this lecture. We'd also like to thank Dr. Richard Kyle and the um, Lowens as well for graciously affording the opportunity for this evening. Thank you. Music without poetic ideas is for many romantics unthinkable. This poetic idea, even literary idea, is evidenced in the music of Robert Schumann, especially his piano music. He's considered by some to be at the center of the romantic movement in music. Perhaps this is due to his love and association to literature throughout his life. He was the youngest son of a bookseller publisher and was a copious reader all his life. One of his favorite authors was Jean-Paul Richter. And this is affirmed in a letter that Schumann wrote. Jean-Paul is still ranks highest with me and I place him above all, not even with the exception of Schiller. Goethe, I do not yet understand. And it is a, is a novel by Jean-Paul that inspired Schumann's Papillon Opus 2. The final chapter of the novel, Flegaliara, describes a masked ball. Walt and Volt are brothers. Walt is poetic, thoughtful, and contemplative, while Volt is passionate, intense, and opinionated. Both brothers are in love with Winna. She loves Walt, but neither brother has confessed their love to her. So at the masked ball, all three are there. Volt switches disguises with his brother and dances with Winna. It is then that he learns that she loves Walt and not himself. With his hopes dashed, he writes a farewell letter and disappears into the night while playing his flute. Walt, not knowing his brother has left, drifts off to sleep while hearing his brother's flute fade in the distance. Now Schumann was not interested in literally depicting the characters in his music from the novel. That idea would come later in another of his piano works entitled Carnival, Opus 9. His attempt here was to reflect the atmosphere and the various moods of the masked ball. The title of the work itself, Papillon, which is French for butterfly, is a direct reflection of the mask ball. During the 19th century, the butterfly was a common mask worn at balls because of the symbolism associated with them. Not only were they a reflection of lightness, playfulness, and delicacy, they were also symbols of illusion and aspiration. Schumann used the title of the work to conceal the idea of the mask ball because without knowing the extra musical literary association of Jean Paul's novel to the work, the listener would likely not be able to hear any direct correlation. But yet, the association is still there and we know it is intentional because of the letter Schumann wrote his family. Read, as soon as possible, the last scene from Jean-Paul's Flegayara. Papillon is an attempt truly to set to music this masked ball. Ask them, his sisters-in-laws to whom the work is dedicated, if perhaps reflected in the Papillon, there is not something of Winna's angelic love, of Walt's poetic soul, and of Walt's mordant temperament. He also wrote to Ludwig Rolstab, bring to mind the last scene of Flegayara, the masked ball, Walt, Volt, masks, Winna, Volt's dancing, the exchange of masks, avowals, anger, revelations, 
hurrying off, the final scene, and then the brother going away. Often I turned over the last page, for the end seemed to me actually to be a beginning. Almost unaware of what I was doing, I found myself at the piano, and thus one papillon after another was created. In Schumann's own copy of the novel, he writes notes to indicate what movements of the music should correlate to the story. Because of the mask ball idea, many of the pieces in Papillon are dances, specifically waltzes, although there is one uh, polonaise. Five of the waltzes come from his earliest works or sketches, which he modified to fit this set. Many of Schumann's musical characteristics are evident and apparent in the music, such as nervous rhythms, languid harmonies, and sporadic syncopated rhythms. Papillon Opus II was written in 1831 when Schumann was 21 years old. Hmm, maybe we should ask our students to do that before they graduate. Hmm, an idea. It is a set of 12 short pieces with a short introduction. This is perhaps his most important early work. People hearing this music or even seeing the score for the first time in the 19th century might have been a little surprised by the lack of a specific form and the abrupt changes in tonality. Even Schumann made comment to the fact. The impression of the piece should not be doubtful. And who expects of the hearer, when a piece is played to him for the first time, that he shall analyze it in mechanical or harmonic detail? With the papillon, perhaps one could make an exception, since the change is too quick, the colors are too motley, and the listener still has the previous page in his head while the player has already finished. The work starts with a short six-measure introduction, and it's followed by a 16-measure uh, movement. It is a waltz that opens with the main theme of the butterfly. It's an ascending scale using all the notes in a D major scale. However, the first scale begins on the dominant, then he does a scale starting on the submediant, and then a followed by a scale that begins on the tonic, ending on the upper tonic, and um, each one ascending higher and higher. According to Schumann's notes, this movement also represents Walt getting ready for the mask ball, and thus the indication at the beginning, dolce, meaning sweetly, which is a reflection of Walt's temperament. The second movement is an E-flat major and represents Walt's confusion as he enters the mask ball. It is marked prestissimo with a rapid ascending arpeggio followed in a different key by a disjunct 16th note pattern which is separated with some rests. movement has been referred to a costume of a giant boot sliding around the floor dressed in itself. It's a stamping rhythm 
which is a very characteristic of the German and Austrian dances, the peasant dances in particular. So you, as you can see, the ready use of octaves and a brief canon at the very end of the piece is kind of a sure depiction of dressed in itself. I'll do all the repeats at the performance. So. <laughs> Jumping ahead here to um, movement seven, Schumann vacillates between the relative minor and the relative major. It's probably the most expressive of, at least in my opinion, of the entire piece and represents Winna's expression of love for Walt. It has a very dreamy characteristic. Schumann has a few instances in the work that he imitates others' composers' works. And one here is in the Eighth Movement, where he imitates Schubert. Uh, this movement was originally written in D minor, and as the story goes, uh, it fooled Tupkin into thinking it was actually Schubert. It also represents the anger of Volt at the Number 10 is also a little tongue-in-cheek parody to Carl Maria von Weber's invitation, invitation to the Dance. So here's another correlation with a mask ball, the dancing, and then the title of the piece, the, mask, uh, the Invitation to the Dance. The eleventh movement is the only polonaise of the set. Incidentally, a polonaise is a Polish dance. And during Jean Paul's novel, Winna is at this time dancing with a Volt, who is disguised as his brother Walt. Winna and Volt speak to each other in Polish, which is her native language. And another interesting musical element of Schumann is seen here kind of in its budding stages. During this time in the novel where the couple are dancing, the music suddenly changes styles and registers. It's short-lived uh, because it's quickly followed by the, the main theme, the main tune, kind of in a truncated reprise. Um, it is as if as De Viro says in his biography, we imagine that a door has suddenly been opened 
and in the waft, the strains of a dance tune from an adjacent room are heard. This germ of an idea is not really fully realized until a later work, which I mentioned previously, the Carnival Opus 9, when the idea of listening in to a dance in an adjacent room is not only heard, but actually is seen on the printed page with a different style of notation being used to represent a couple walking along the veranda and passing by an open window Thus, the music is getting louder. And then in between the windows, the music is getting softer. It's represented um, quite creatively in his music. But I'm sorry, I'll have to save that for another lecture. So. <laughs> the final movement of Papillon has some fascinating references. Uh, as Schumann concludes the story, representation of the masked ball. The movement opens with a 17th century dance known as the Grossvatertanz, or the grandfather dance. Traditionally, this dance was performed at the end of a wedding reception. It describes the grandfather and the grandmother who are transferred back to their own youthful wedding. It's a very stately dance um, as the grandfather in this case, in Papillon, he's come in to the masked ball, and he tells those who are participating at the ball that it's time to go home. So this Grossfather dance, uh, the dance, is actually interwoven through many little corners of this movement. Uh, but this is the main theme presented at the beginning. The second line of the movement is taken from Johann Sebastian Bach's Peasant Cantata. Uh, the bottom line there is actually directly from his cantata. Uh, and then the top part is actually in Schumann's. It's as if uh, the, the revelers there are taunting and teasing. You can kind of hear them going, nah, 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 kind of sound. That's kind of the effect of this um, second line of the last movement. The original butterfly theme then comes back from the first movement as it kind of flutters its way through the masked ball. And near the end of the movement, the clock chimes the morning hour of six o'clock, and you will hear it. It kind of rings through pretty clear. And that signifies the end of the ball. The butterfly theme and the grandfather dance gets softer and softer while the melody, which is represented by the butterfly theme, which is played on Volt's, Volt's flute as he disappears, that continues 
The theme then gets shorter and shorter or more fragmented, representing the difficulty hearing Volt's flute as he disappears. And then there's silence. A dominant seventh chord is played, and slowly each note is released until only one note is heard. The guests are leaving. It's very visual on the page. And then the end. There are many ideas of symbolism that can be applied to this work, beginning with Jean Paul's novel title, Flegoyara, which can be translated the awkward age, the flailing years, the fledgling years, all to reflect some of the awkwardness of adolescence. He was a young composer at the time, and even the awkwardness of some of his early compositions. But there is a germ of greatness as his later works display. The title he used for the work Pepion, or Butterflies, implies not only the masked ball, but also the change of life from caterpillar to butterfly. And spiritually, we also know, just as a caterpillar is changed to a beautiful butterfly, so too our lives when, tra when changed by the transforming power of God. This work shows Schumann's early attempts at showing through music not only the complexity of life, but also the beauty of music and the ability it has for communicating profound truth. It has been my privilege to collaborate with Professor Shinhee Chin on this project. Her love of art and music, along with their integration, is very evident in her skill, her knowledge, and the beautiful pieces that she has created. Shinhee will now come and explain her art and her art-making process. Learning, still learning. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Lichty, for excellent lecture about the Papillon. And thank you again for this kind lecture opportunity to share music and visual art. Dr. Sheila Lichty and I occasionally talk about art in general at the faculty meeting. These casual conversations have naturally developed into the idea of doing collaboration work. I learned that Robert Schumann was one of Dr. Sheila Lichty's favorite composers. As I grew up in South Korea, I learned Schumann's Troy Merai in my childhood. It was one of the most popular pieces of classical music in Korea. And Sheila introduced me to Schumann's Papillon, Opus 2. As a visual artist, I was so intrigued and inspired by the artistic creativity and freedom of expression embedded in Schumann's music. I was also very excited to create new pieces of art, new approaches, new challenges, new formats, new concepts. Like the free movement of butterfly in the suit's title, Papillon, we work individually and now we perform and exhibit together like a butterfly's two wings. Uh, in this project, we try to show that music and visual art can serve as a lens through which we can see the complexity, integrity, 
beauty of human nature and the world. I attempt to reflect the charm of Schumann's work in a visual form with 12 fiber art pieces as it is a set of 12 short pieces of music. Each piece is 12 inches by 18 inches in which each individual panel is an integral piece of the fiber art. The size of the finished one will be 48 inches by 54 inches. Papillons are unrelated to preceding ones, yet the suit returns in the final theme of traditional grandfather's dance, signifying the end of the ball. Likewise, each colored stitched block in my work stands on its own individually, yet connects to the whole, creating a larger wave of motion, like the flight of the butterfly. So there is no butterfly image in my work, rather the movement. The number 12 has a significant meaning as it represents hours on a clock face, implying the finiteness of life in this earth. One of the main elements of music is tone color. I observe that contrasting and complementary tonal sounds are built into his music using rapid shift in mood, texture, dynamics, and tone color. Based on my own interpretation of his music, I also chose colors for each panel in such a way that each reflects the tone colors. His music depicts ball at which the twin brothers, as uh, Dr. Shila Likti mentioned about, vault and volt confront each other over the love of Vina. Uh, Walt is a poetic sentimentalist and Volt is a forceful realist. It has been often said that Walt, dreamer, and Volt, realist, reveal the conflicting aspects of Schumann's own personality. To represent Walt's poetic soul, I use blue. So I have a color here, so blue colors. And Volt's forceful temperament, I use uh, red orange. So then I use uh, Vina, uh, angelic love. I use um, different shades of red. Uh, means uh, pink, kind of a different colors of pink. It's a small, but later it, it kind of expand a little bit. And um, then I uh, um, these two vault and vault color, the blue and orange, um, are complementary color pair. They oppose each other, but also complete at the same time. I use my own artistic license to interpret green as a symbol of a vitality and rebirth um, where they encounter the truth, either confession in eighth movement or revealing the truth uh, for the 10th movement. As for the technique goes, I use a random stitch, just like um, fiber art in the, in the lobby, a call to harvest. Um, a call to harvest was created by unraveling thread of a similar shades and random, randomly stitched by them by hand. The array of colors, the multiple panels in the piece, suggest quilt blocks, an integral part of Tabor College's unique Mennonite heritage. When uh, we perform today, I will show the PowerPoint of initial choice of the thread and the finished one for each piece. When it goes number 10 and 11 and 12 movement, I will show short uh, moving images. For me, the hard part of the interpretation was how to make them as a whole. As a human species have a rhythmic dissonances, uh, circular concepts, or quirky changes in mood and juxtaposition of character. Those characteristics, however, are what made him the timeless composer for which he's appreciated today in modern times. As our lecture title, Butterfly Masks, indicated, two symbols stand out throughout this piece that inspire my work thematically, mask and butterfly. 
In general, mask has been used for disguising one's identity or revealing one's emotion and opinions without judgment. In my visual presentation, I intend to display the soul's struggle to resolve its true identity. Being an artist involves wearing many masks. At the same time, an artist has the responsibility to reveal the truth. Indeed, I constantly ask myself and as an artist, what is my role as an artist in this society and the world at large? As a painter, Paul Clay wrote in The Inward Vision, art does not reproduce the visible, rather it makes visible. Though Schumann never gives a clear explanation of the relationship of the title butterfly to the work itself, many have guessed its meaning. The term <coughs> transformation has surfaced as a recurring idea. <coughs> Butterflies are powerful symbol of a transformation and hope. Uh, while constantly reminding us life is fragile, that human dignity is precious. As Christians, we can refer to Romans 12 too. I quote, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. This verse is about renewing your mind, changing the way you think to create better life for yourself and the life that honors God. Thank you. Now we are going to perform and show art together.
Thank you very much. I think we're going to do a little bit of Q&A. So if there's anybody that has questions for either Shin He or myself, I think Dr. Johnson is going to, has a mic that he can roam or he can relay it if we can't hear the questions, so. A question. Oh, I'm sorry. Emily. Ms. Olson, I'm sorry. Yes. Go ahead. Um, Shinhee, I would like to know what you use for the basis of your pieces before you start adding the colored threads. I usually use uh, recycled old blanket for my base. But uh, to um, attach to the board, I use the plastic in the back. So my base is all the blanket. Our old blankets don't look like that at all. <laughs> Another question. Yes. Jacob, so glad you're here tonight. First of all, thank you, it was beautiful. Um, I know that you said earlier that um, the piece was written when, when uh, Schumann was 21, is that correct? So what was it like working with a 21-year-old piece and then in the same place, uh, Shinny, what was it like to create art based off of the mind of a 21-year-old? So if I understand the question, what's it like to work with a 21-year-old piece or a 21-year-old writing a piece? <laughs> um, well, I have played some other things by Schumann which were um, much later, so it's been interesting to see the development that, that kind of transpired. Um, it, this is actually one of my first introductions to Schumann as a pianist. Um, so it kind of opened my world to the um, to the interpretation and some of the connectability outside of music that can be implied in music. So, and then if, when you study some of uh, Schumann's later works, um, it's it only increases. There's there's a lot of interplay between literature, um, musical interpretations of people. Um, as well as events, and uh, it, it just kind of kind of builds on itself. So it's been fun. It's been fun. Yeah, he is a challenge because he you need a big hand to play Schumann. Um, it's not a small hand person, but and he had a big hands too. But I'll let Shin He answer hers. Well, it makes us humble, <laughs> and art is um, is. It's kind of lasting, and um, there's no um, no hierarchy that young people make a great pieces, and old people can enjoy it, like me. <laughs> um, and also, it is very humbling to teach um, youth to introduce the art, but also the um, in Asia there's a uh, word that the blue comes out of blue means. Um, the, the, the deeper blue comes out of blue, means a uh, student can be better than the teacher. And so the, the, um, the, the artists that we know, Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci, they are better than their teachers. So we are very happy to teach people that who can be great artists or already great artists. And thank you for my student. It's always a risk to say what I'm about to say, but I know a number of people have quite a drive. But let's, let, we can do two more questions. And I've got one if nobody else does. Well, with that, let me ask uh, our, our guests tonight, to what degree, if it's not too personal a question, but to what degree does your devotional life give inspiration to your artistic Life, or where do, where do you hear the voice of God as you do what is a mystery to me? Mm -hmm. 
Well, music for me is a gift from God. So everything that I do in music is a gift from God. So I, it's the lens that I see music through. Um, and I see then the composers, and many of them had um, spiritual connections themselves. So if I can see that in their music as well, that's great. But for me, it's just uh, music is an extension of what God has given me. So for that, I give it back to him. answer that <laughs> well when I start this one I have a blank slate I didn't have any idea and so I have to rely on to God and God didn't give me an inspiration right away um, so um, the old blank that I use is that um, it's the, the mind is a blank slate but um, when I'm using all the blanket nothing to lose. If you ruin it, it's already abandoned one. So it gives me a freedom to work on. Gradually, I find the, the right direction. So when I'm creating art, I'm very vulnerable, look like I'm a, just a little kid learning new things. But then uh, I uh, connect my past and my uh, some learned technique into the artwork. So it is ongoing and sometimes um, God is silent. <laughs> so I don't have any answer, but I still uh, have a hope. And then it's, uh, it's an ongoing uh, dialogue between God and me. Let me just say bravo. Thank you very much. And thank you again. What, what a delight it is to be here tonight. It really was a celebration of the Academy in many ways. We started with an author with literature and who inspired music, a composer and a pianist uh, that was performed by a performer and a lecturer and a pianist. And, and then to see the interpretation and in the art, in the fabric and the, and the lecture and to hear the thoughts. Thank you very much. As we, as we come together, many of us come from different disciplines and, but we all, I think, can look in awe and, and be impressed and, and admire the work that was done here tonight. And so we appreciate very much your work. I think of uh, how when Jesus was asked, uh, what's the greatest commandment? And he answered, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And the second is like it, to love your neighbor as yourself. And in many ways, we've done that tonight. You have loved God uh, with what he has given you. And, and we all can do that. And we also can love each other in sharing these gifts with each other. And I believe all of those things have, done, have happened tonight. So thank you very much. It's been a delight to be here. Let me close us simply in prayer now. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your many, many blessings. We thank you that you are a creative God, that you inspire, you give gifts, and that you give us the abilities to do amazing things. And we know that it's only through you what you have given us. And I pray that all that we do would be an offering back to you, God, a thank you, uh, giving you glory. And I thank you tonight for uh, how we've seen that happen. And thank you for the way that you have gifted uh, these ladies and, and bringing us all together to celebrate this tonight. We ask your protection now for those of us who have to travel a ways and even a short ways. Just uh, go with us. Thank you for this evening. And may you be glorified in all that we do. In Jesus' name, amen. I believe you are dismissed. Yeah.